So I was checking in on Bao just to see how her whole situation was going after she got a bunch of backlash from the Vietnamese community, and I noticed something weird. Her followers list is now only one person, and that is Mr. Beast. And I thought that was really weird. So I decided to take a look at her most recent tweets and check this out. Her pinned comment is now a message that says Bao is on indefinite hiatus from Twitter. She has no plans of coming back, and her account is currently run by Cha, her manager. All important DNs are still communicated to her, and future posts will be from her manager. Now, she did go ahead and do a stream explaining why she left Twitter, but to be honest, I feel like anyone who's watched this channel at all already knows all of the plethora of reasons why any sane person would leave this hell site. And in fact, as I was watching this clip, that's the exact term she used. She called Twitter a hell site. So, you know, I don't expect her to come back anytime soon. Now, the manager who took over her account, Cha, made a quote retweet that said, anyways, I'm just vibing here in my corner. I appreciate anyone who reached out. I'm definitely doing fine and honestly found the whole situation a bit cursed slash funny. So it's good to know that Cha is taking this all in stride and is happy to take on the increased workload of basically just running Bao's entire Twitter account. I feel like even though some people may view this as a drastic decision, there's no sense in staying on Twitter unless you absolutely need to be. And if you have a manager that can run your account for you, all the better. Now I do have a little bit of an update from a previous video where I mentioned that Idol revealed their rev split with their talents, where 60% of it goes to talents, 15% goes to expenses, and 25% goes to Idol. And we talked about how that was a pretty decent rev split. And it looks like they've gone ahead and divulged even more information about the revenue split that they have with their talents. Where 60% of the YouTube and tips revenue goes directly to the talent, 30% of physical goods, which you'll know is merchandise, goes to the talent. And remember, Niji Sanji has a 1-2% to revenue split when it comes to merchandise with their talent. So that is a massive bonus to their revenue. They get 60% of digital goods, 55% of sponsorship revenues. They pay for all of the streaming expenses. And when they first debut, the value of that package is $6,000, which they estimate is six times more than the estimated industry average. Now, I have no idea where they're getting the figures for the estimated industry average. Are they looking at Hololive, Niji Sanji, Phase Connect? V Shoujo, I have no idea where they're getting these figures from. And the little asterisk there isn't particularly helpful either. It just says that it's presenting estimates derived from their internal studies, whatever that means. So I'm not going to pay too much attention to the estimated industry average category because it's completely unconfirmed speculation. But I just wanted to give a shout out to Idol for treating VTubers with respect and paying them what they deserve to be paid. And for anyone unfamiliar with Idol, most people watching this channel have probably seen the YouTube shorts from Rin Penrose. Her channel has absolutely exploded in popularity. And there's also my personal favorite, Yuko Yurei, who I absolutely adore. But that's all I wanted to say about the topics for today. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Bye guys.